Earlier in the series, we created rice terraces inside of Cinema 4D R26 using Terraform FX, and we also textured them using Redshift. In this episode, we're going to be creating some clouds and an environment and some lighting for our scene, so I really hope you enjoy this. And if you do, please hit like and subscribe, and let me know if you have any questions below. So now we're going to talk a little bit about the Redshift environment. So in order to pull that up, I'm going to hit Shift C, and then that pulls up the um, command manager, and then you can search for whatever you want to find. So I'll look for environment by typing it in, and then I'll see the Redshift environment option down here, and I'll click on that and it will add it into our scene. And at first, everything turns white and there's so much environment in here, we can't really see anything. So we'll adjust that by adjusting the scattering. So the scattering adjusts the brightness of the environment. So as we pull this number back, you'll see that we can see more and more of our geometry and then it fades off into white and the tint controls the color so if you want it to fade into red you can do that although that doesn't look quite right here I'm going to make it something lighter not very saturated. I think that when you're working on a landscape, if you have the foreground a warmer or cooler color than the background, it gives a greater sense of depth. So the green is cooler right now than the background, and that gives it more depth than if the background was just a neutral white. So that's a really subtle way to create a sense of depth. And it's used a lot in landscape paintings, if you pay close attention. I would not take it too far, though. If you make it really obvious that you're making the background a warm color and the foreground a cool color, and you make it really obvious, it'll look weird instead of people just looking and being like, this looks right to me. This, this looks like it has a great sense of depth. So make sure to... Keep that effect subtle. Subtle is best for that. So here we have it fading into the back. Let's go over some more of the settings. Attenuation. So attenuation affects how... So attenuation controls the strength of the fog and the amount by which light gets attenuated as it goes through it. So if we adjust the attenuation, you'll notice that the fog looks much more dense back here. And we can continue to increase this. So it affects how much we can see further back because the the environment is becoming much stronger in a sense so it's harder to see past there which is really interesting i think environment helps create a greater sense of depth um i think this is a little bit too much though because it's also making the sky kind of look like a dark and muddy color which i do not like and I might even make this a little bit more subtle over here and reduce the saturation. We want it to be a little bit of a warmer color, but not very much. And I want this to be pretty light.
That's kind of a cool looking color now that it's a little bit more yellow. You can adjust it however you want. Okay. Now the attenuation isn't bothering me quite as much. I'll take it back a little bit though because it's pretty intense. It's one of those settings where a little bit goes a really long way and you don't need too much. Phase controls how light scatters on your objects when light passes through your environment. So I just wanted to point something out. I noticed that they changed the name of phase to anastropy. I'm not totally sure if I am pronouncing that right. So this has changed. So this used to say phase and now it says this new word here, but it does the same thing. The easiest way to understand this is by just seeing it. Otherwise it's just really abstract. So this is it at zero. Um, I mean, sorry, at negative one. And then as we slowly increase it, you can begin to see that since we have a sun on this side of the screen, you can see the fog a little bit more there and it's a little bit brighter. So it's controlling how the light passes through the fog. Now it's even brighter. This, this has a very dramatic lighting, I feel like, by just doing that a little bit. doing a little bit of the opposite now that we're in positive numbers. So that is attenuation, or sorry, that is the phase. Maybe I'll bring it to somewhere here. I think I actually liked it at the default. Default of zero. Maybe I'll push it over a little bit, very little. Okay, now it's 0 0.06. It looks good to me. And so that's a good start. I also added some low-lying clouds in the other rice terraces that I made as the example. So in here, the way that I made clouds is a little bit different. And I came up with this idea a little bit on accident while I was just messing around with Terraform FX. So it's a little bit of a different technique than a lot of people use. But what I'm going to actually do is I'm going to turn off IPR for right now, and I'm going to copy and paste our terrain. I'm going to keep the noise. I'm going to delete quantize, and I'm going to delete blur. Because we no longer need those. I'll adjust the seed here to randomize it some more, change it to some other number. So you can start to see it. And if I go ahead and solo these, you'll be able to see it a little bit better. I think what I'll do is I'll just turn off the terrain for right now. And I'm going to actually remove this texture because we don't need it on there. The next thing that I'd like to do is grab a volume builder, drop the terrain into a volume builder.
something else I'd like to do just to make this a little bit lower res is under objects uh, in the terrain I'm going to reduce the segments to something much smaller so I changed it to about 500 and when we drop the terrain into the volume builder you'll see all of these squares and these squares are called voxels they don't actually render out unless if you add a volume material to them and I'm going to reduce the voxel size to something smaller the smaller the number the higher the resolution I'm going to try one for right now and it almost looks like it has steps right now just because of the voxel size even though we deleted quantize and that's not what is causing that you can also create a redshift material and choose a volume redshift material For volume type, under the volume builder, select fog because we want this to be fog. And I'm going to turn this back on for right now. I'm going to turn on start IPR. And you'll notice that just putting a redshift volume isn't causing any clouds to appear. So we actually need to adjust this material some. I'll pull it open here, open up redshift volume. We don't need emission. This is not going to be emissive. but we can choose for scatter to use volume builder so this is still having some issues and the reason why it's having issues is because this terrain actually isn't closed it's open on the bottom so if the volume builder is trying to make a surface, um, trying to make a, a volume from a, a closed, a closed mesh, it won't be able to do that with the terrain. So we actually need to make some adjustments to the terrain itself. We need to select solid. And now you can actually see some clouds. So that's looking really great. And now we can go back into the redshift volume and make some adjustments. So you can affect the scatter in here. We can reduce the absorption this will make it a little bit of a lighter fog if we move this all the way up it's going to look very dark like a like a storm cloud we don't want it to be a storm cloud we want it to be a lot a lot 
more cheerful than that. There we go. So it was really hard for me to see the scatter coefficient affecting this. The lower it is, the more transparent the cloud is, so you can see that the clouds are much more transparent right now. Maybe I'll make this 0 0.02. See how that looks. You can see we have some nice clouds. You can still adjust your terrain in here. Um, you could make this larger if you'd like so that the clouds go further back. I made mine go pretty far back. Of course, something to keep in mind as you make your terrain larger is that it is scaling those segments to the size. So if you make it really a very, very large um, size, it will have trouble showing the same amount of detail. So you need to find that happy medium of getting the amount of detail you want, but also not overdoing it. And it is possible that my computer doesn't like me doing 10,000. So I'm going to take this down to something like maybe 5,000 by 5,000. Because I feel like 10,000 is slowing it down quite a, quite a lot. So I actually, while recording a few moments ago, I restarted the IPR and it looks totally different now. I think that there was a glitch where it wasn't updating appropriately to the changes while rendering. So if you're having issues with that, try restarting. It may have been that my geometry wasn't updating. Maybe my geometry was frozen or something of that sort. But if you're running into that problem where you have the IPR going and your geometry doesn't seem to be updating, you think you're making changes to the terrain and it's not showing up, just refresh your IPR. It might take a few minutes to calculate the geometry, but it will and it'll make your life easier. So what I had done is I took down the scattering to about half, and this is a really small number, but it helped add back in some of that detail. It might have been too much. The smaller, I'll give this a go. Maybe I'll, I'll adjust the attenuation some. I kind of want the clouds to fade into the sky in the background in this render. So that's what I'm going for.
Here I'm just making some final adjustments to the environment and I hope you really enjoyed this episode. This pretty much wraps up this project. Please let me know if you have any questions or comments below and don't feel shy. I'm, I'm happy to answer any questions you may have about this whole process. I really enjoyed sharing this tutorial with you and I hope you enjoyed it. See you on the next one.